most famous physical therapist on the internet. Hi folks, I'm Bob Shrub, physical therapist. Brad Heinick, physical therapist. And together we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. Brad, what they don't tell you about carpal tunnel syndrome. <laughs> what, Bob? <laughs> We're going to tell you today, these are little known facts about it and also some treatments that may not be known. And, and very effective ones. Right. I, I think there's such a big misconception about carpal tunnel in general. Uh, people Carpal tunnel syndrome. Right. Be people just say, I've got carpal tunnel. And if they really understand what it is, it's not so scary and how you can treat it uh, with some of these simple techniques that can be effective. Surgery is not always needed here. Exactly there's right. Times, there's times it gets too far and surgery is needed, but you know I don't want people to feel guilty right. if it gets to that point. But and we can show you some things you can do at home that can really turn things around and you don't even need to see a therapist. You got a few stats about it first? Right. Statistics? This is interesting. 3% of adults in the United States will end up with carpal That's tunnel. That's a lot. Yeah, actually, actually it is if you think it about is. it. Yeah. Um, Women, females, are three times more likely to get it, just yeah. statistically speaking. I'm not sure why. I think they, they, they thought it was due to the shape of the bones and stuff. Again, you know, the, the carpal tunnel is a tunnel that goes right through your wrist. Basically, it's two bones that form a, a tunnel, and then there's a ligament that goes over the... We better not just say two bones because it's got all the carpal oh, bones. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> right. We'll get in trouble because there's some therapists watching. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but the median nerve, a nerve that comes out through from your neck mm -hmm. and travels all the way down your arm, goes in through that, that little tunnel and, and it supplies the sensation to your hand. Right. And along with that nerve, there's a number of tendons that make your fingers flex. And so it can get kind of packed up and a little bit too tight in there. And if it gets too tight in there, uh, we're not going to go into the reasons right now, but that nerve can get pinched. And when that nerve gets pinched, you start getting numbness, tingling, weakness, all these symptoms in your fingers. And it's typically... Uh, your Thumb, pointer, yep. middle, and ring. Right. Half, half of the ring. Right. Pinky's so, usually not involved. So a lot of times what you're going to see is, is even a little bit of muscle wasting right here in, in the thumb. Right, if you uh, had it long enough. If you've had it long enough. And mm -hmm. you'll, if you compare, if you have it on one side and not the other, you'll see that the muscle may be even wasted a little bit there. Sure. So. Okay. Um, so anyways... That's the anatomy of it. So don't get too excited. When they do surgery, they actually just go in and they open up the carpal tunnel by cutting the ligament that, that goes across and forms the bridge, so to speak. Um, the other thing is the average age of the person that, or who gets this the most, 55. 55. Yep. Yeah, so it's not so much younger people, not so much the older, but that... That's me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm 56, you're 54? Yes, okay. exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, there, there's some tests you can do that right. you could even do yourself, mm -hmm. right, Brad? Exactly, kind of yep. You, you have it? Yep, the Tenel's test, just put your hand out like this. And you're going to tap. Tap. And you, know what, you know what tapping reminds me of, Bob? What's that? We've got a little button Oh, that's here. right. You've got a button here you could tap on it. So if you're new to our, you know, our, our channel, please take the, just a second right. to go ahead and hit that little subscribe button there because uh, we provide you with lots of videos on how to stay healthy and fit, and we upload a video every evening. Right. Man, we're, we're really good at this. And we really appreciate you some subscribe. Yeah, so okay. the Tonell's test, you tap, and you're going to do that for 60 seconds. And if you start to develop, or the symptoms in your fingers start to get worse yeah, from the tapping. you start getting the tingling or the pain. Yep. That's, that's a positive that's sign. That's a positive sign. It doesn't mean you necessarily have it. Positive it's, doesn't mean good. Positive means that it's possible that you have right, <laughs> right. carpal tunnel. Then so the other one, you take the back of your hands, put it together, go like this, and then... Squeeze up like this. So, Phalen's test? Yep. Hold that for 60 seconds. That's reverse Phalen's test, I believe, because this is Phalen's test this way, right? You're going to do it both ways. Right. I, I like to do it both. I, I, in this way, for 60 seconds, see if the symptoms are irritating. You're recreating the symptoms. Right. Or this way, and, and go this them. way. You're just, this way puts a crush. Well, maybe we don't need to get into the, the, the details of the mechanics of it. Uh, but those are the tests you can do it. And if they're all positive, well, you know, you've got a pretty good chance you may have carpal tunnel right. syndrome, obviously but not 100%. Obviously, you're going to go see your doctor about it. But right. All right. You want to go to some of the causes of, of what, you know, causes your carpal tunnel syndrome to appear? Well, that's the interesting thing. Oftentimes, you can have these symptoms in your hand, and they're not from the carpal tunnel, but they can be from your neck. Right. The, the nerves, that, the median nerve starts way up here in your low neck. So the neck, the nerve could be compressed here and irritating, 
causing the numbness and tingling down here, and we can get fooled. You know, and therapists and doctors can get fooled by they that. They can get compressed a number of places on the way down. Exactly so right. That's where we're going to talk about how important it is to have good posture and and do some stretches even. Exactly right. So if you're working at a computer station, it's just not so much as you're working your hands, but your posture of your right. body. Are you rounded forward? Exactly. Shoulders this forward. is putting stress on the nerve before it even gets down to the hand. Right. And it gets, becomes what we call a double crush syndrome, where you get pressure up here, it gets sensitive, the nerve is sensitive, so now it gets a little pressure down here and it's even more sensitive and it starts giving you the symptoms. Right. So we need to get this posture in good position and you need to maybe even do some stretches. Right. So um, if, we're, if we're treating a patient for carpal tunnel, we'll not only treat the hand and do stretches for the hand, but we'll talk about posture, we'll talk about stretching the scalene muscles which are in here, which you can stretch out here because that nerve bundle does go through the scalene muscles. Yep. And then we're gonna work on the first rib. As a matter of fact, should I show that first sure, rib stretch? Sure, yeah. This is something you can do at home. You take a belt, if it's on your left side, sit on the belt with your left butt cheek, take that belt, go over the top of your shoulder, okay, and then you just, you pull down here with both hands and you're compressing here and then you take your head. Usually we start with just deep breathing, Brad. Okay. You take a couple deep breaths while you're giving pressure on it. Different therapists yeah. do things differently. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I like Bob's is more complete, yeah. so. It's just as, as a starting point. Yeah, you let things relax. And then you go ahead and do the stretch. Good point, thanks Bob. And we go like this. And you can get a lot of, I mean, I really get a lot of a good stretch We're on looking here. at a rib that may be a little bit tight and we're trying to mobilize that first rib because it can put pressure on the, the nerve as right. it goes up over the top of it. So it, it, this, this gives a little bit of um, relief to that. Feels good too. Yeah, it does. That one always feels good. Yep. I, even if it doesn't help, it's a, it's a good one to do. Sure. So. All right, so we talked about posture. Um, the other thing I think, you know, a good stretch to do, Brad, is if you're in a doorway, and you know, here's the doorway. You put your arms on both sides yep. of the doorway, and then you're gonna just stretch forward like this. You're gonna put this, and it's gonna support you. You can do it down here, here, up here, and you're gonna get the different parts of the pectoralis major and minor, which can also put some stress on the nerve sure. as it's going yep. through. So, um, good stretch to do. And I'm sure people are thinking, well, what about the wrist stretches and, and the things you can do with your wrist? And you know, the stretches I'll do is, you know, stretching here, but it's going to be a gentle stretch. You're not right. going to stretch the, the bejesus out of it because you don't want to make it sore and irritate it too. Well, well. I, I like the nerve glide, Brad. And, okay. And, and we've, we've been, go through that yeah, we've been doing this a lot with patients. So you're going to glide the nerve, the median nerve, and, that, and that's very easy to do. All you have to do is you're going to put your hand out like this, mm -hmm. palm down, you know, facing the wall, okay. basically if there's a wall there. You're not gonna start with a wall, but all you're gonna start off first is just kind of doing a few like this, Brad, because the, this may be very tight, especially sure. compared to the other side if you only have it on one side. But you're just gonna start with these, and then eventually you're gonna even go like this and even stretch it even a little bit more. And, and you might wonder, well, what's the neck got to do with it? Well, that nerve goes here, all the way through here, through the, uh, by the first rib, through that, uh, the scalene muscles and up to here, and when you move your head yeah. that way, it stretches that nerve out. So eventually what you can do, if, if that becomes too easy, and you, let's say you do a set of 10, I probably wouldn't do more than 10 a day, right. Brad, a set of 10 a day. Um, you can then go ahead and even put a hand against a wall like this and go ahead and press like this. Now that's, that's my, the more advanced version. My shoulder's the wall, by yeah, the way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so, Again, again, this is a great one to do, but I, I can't emphasize this enough, Brad, that you have to be very gentle with this one. Yeah. This is not one to go the first time to start, because you'll irritate that nerve oh. and it'll get worse. <laughs> yeah. So the first time it's just very gentle. You kind of bump up against the pain. Oh, that hurts a little bit. That hurts a little bit. And then eventually, oh, it's feeling a little bit better. It's stretching out a little more. The nerves are very sensitive. They, they don't tolerate uh, stretching very well. It's not like a muscle. Right. You get to be a little wimpy, and you should be wimpy on this one. Brad, we should really talk about bracing because the, the studies have shown that this really does help, too. Right. I, I know a, a surgeon uh, in La Crosse, and he does a lot of wrist stuff. And, he, and when he gets someone, he does the right thing. He says, before I even you know, do much more with you, I want you to go home, get a wrist brace for the involved side, and sleep with it. A lot of people think, oh, you should use it while you're working where the problem is being irritated, which is an okay idea. I have no problem with that, but it's probably more important to sleep with your wrist in neutral because that allows circulation 
through the carpal tunnel, taking stress off the nerve and the tendons, allowing it to heal while you rest at night. And the studies have shown that this really does help. Mm -hmm. This really does, uh, you know, decrease the amount of people that end up having surgery. Right. So. Well, my wife has these for hers. When hers flares up, she starts wearing them. And within two nights, it's feeling better. Just really quickly too, Brad, I want to make sure you all, some of you may be at your computer right now, make sure that two things that are, are important. One, that your screen is up high enough mm -hmm. so you're not like this, which puts pressure on the nerve. Right. The second thing is this part of your arm is going to be vertical. Right. Okay, you don't want it forward like this. And the keyboard is going to be down here, not right. up like this. So your wrist can be flat. Right. Sometimes it, people even put it on their lap and they can have the wrist down a little bit. Right. You know. Yeah, I, I took a class for this specific uh, problem, and they talked about if the keyboard was on your lap, that's actually the ideal location. And I use a lap board, and mm -hmm. I put my keyboard on top of there, and that's right. how I actually work, and it works out well for me. Right. So. I, I think a lot of these things are what the, the people are not told about carpal tunnel. Right. Um, and so you now you know some of the secrets, and uh, if you want to know a few more secrets, keep watching our channel, and we'll... And we'll convey them to you yeah they might get bored watching them <laughs> no they're gonna have fun oh, just giving you a hard thanks time thanks for watching <laughs>